All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Joe Toombs. I'm the director of athletics at East Ramapo. Today, I'm meeting with uh, head coach of football team and track team, Andrew Delva, and with one of his standout football players, Chris White. So, Coach, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, and then we'll pass it over to Chris. No problem. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Andrew Delva. I'm the head football coach at Springdale High School and uh, also called the defense. Hello, everybody. I'm Chris White, Spring Valley. I was Spring Valley High School, um, played football and basketball, number seven from a football team on a 200 basketball team. Okay. And what positions did you play, Chris? For, for basketball, I played point guard. For um, football, I played outside linebacker, strong safety. Gotcha. So, Coach, I mean, as soon as I walked in the district um, of East Ramapo, uh, Chris was one of those names I heard about as a – a kid I, I had to connect with and I had to, to watch. Um, you know, what can you tell us about Chris and why we, we're, we're spotlighting him today? Uh, you know, like I said, Chris is a player that comes once in a, once in a while. Uh, as a coach, you're, you're happy and blessed to have him on your team. And like I said, he's a general of our defense. He, Chris has been a three-year starter for me on the defensive side. <clears throat> this year he stepped up the role on offense and special teams. And like I said, just being a total impact player and, uh, you could tell from all his accolades that he received this year how good of a player he was. Uh, but the thing that I was most happy about was how he improved as a leader, uh, you know, commanding his uh, presence being felt by the team within demanding the respect that he got. Uh, we know his play was always going to do that, but now taking the leadership role and, and you know, holding meetings and holding the players accountable was, uh, was a big step for him this year. That's great, Coach. And, and, you know, as always, being that we talk to student athletes, I'm glad you mentioned, um, you know, Chris as an athlete and also highlighted some of his leadership qualities as well. So, Chris, Coach mentioned the uh, the accolades. Mm -hmm. Do we have a half hour if we can run down them all? Yeah. <laughs> why, don't you give, why don't you give us some of the, the highlights, some of the uh, the cliff notes and all the awards? From, from three years I've been on varsity, everything I got, I got from – 2018-2019 All-State linebacker selection. 2019 Class AA Play of the Year. 2019 Rockland County Play of the Year. Uh, 2019 League LB of the Year. Two-time All-Section, all two-time All-League, two-time and three-time All-County. It's it, it really is an extensive list and. Um... You know, you, you put your time in and you get what you deserve. Mm. So um, I don't know if I told you I was a, I was a linebacker back in my day. So we're going to watch in a little while, and I can't wait to get to this part. Um, after we're done talking about Chris, we're going to watch some game footage, and we're going to do like a coach's circle and, and talk about the plays. So I'm excited to get to that part. Um, Coach, of all those awards you just heard, um, uh, you know, they're not common. Do, which which ones would you like to highlight or talk about as far as what Chris has accomplished? Um, you know, being Rockin' County uh, Athlete of the Year, Player of the Year is a, is a big one, um, especially, like I said, you, you're recognized as the one of the best players in the county, you know, the guys that you play against, that you see every day. Um, you're voted by, you know, the coaches and obviously the, the Rockin' Journal News, Josh Thompson. Um, you know, we people submit their, their nominees and then, you obviously, uh, you get selected, and that's a big one to have. Um, and also the section, you know. I mean, you know, when you're up there in the section, you're competing in Class AA with likes of New Rochelle, the North Rocklands, and all the other top schools, and you get recognized as the Defensive Player of the Year. That's big. You know, we haven't had that in a long time, and that's a, a definitely a big honor to have, to be recognized as one of the best defensive players, you know, especially coming this year where teams, a lot of teams ran away from him. You know, he had a big, big junior year of tackles and tackles for loss, you know, team literally game plan to, to run away from him. Uh, but Chris stepped up his level even more as becoming a cover guy, uh, being like a strong safety where everybody knew his blitzing ability. But, you know, with interceptions and batted passes and dropping the coverage, you know, he showed his uh, how, how diverse he is as a defensive player. Yeah, it's great. And you have to have that growth, uh, especially, you know, we're going to talk in a little while, but you want to go play college ball. So you have to really diversify because yeah. um, you can't be that one hit wonder when you play college ball. Um, you, know, you told an interesting story to me earlier, and I didn't know this. At one point in high school, you weren't playing football. Yeah. Tell me more point, about that. 
um, coming into high school, I was actually focused on basketball. That was really my main goal. Like I, uh, my seventh grade, seventh grade was my last time I played football in Rock County. I was playing quarterback at Chestnut, and then just like after that, I just I didn't want to, I didn't want to play it no more. So coming into coming into high school it was like I wasn't sure if I really wanted to play with Coach Dell. But every time Coach Dell would see me in the hallway, he'll act, stop me and ask me was I gonna play or anything. But it's like going to my tenth grade year. After that first, that very first day of school, I text my mom saying, "Oh, we need to go get some pleats. I want to play football again." <laughs> told Delver, and then ever since I told him, he told me I would have to wait. I couldn't play that next game. I'll probably have to play the game after that to see what just happens. So, end up playing, end up playing uh, the very first game. I came back, end up starting. So I've been a three year starter since my first game. That's amazing. It's amazing to go from not playing and now on a, on a college trajectory to play in college. Um, coach, I got to pause on that real quick. The, a kid like Chris, a, 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 a future college football player, is walking around the hallways. What's it, what's it like when you talk to kids like that that don't realize they have an athletic potential or un, they could be more on in various sports? It's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a yeah. demanding thing. It's a challenging thing. But uh, like I said, I, I got to watch him play. Uh, you know, as a young person, you know, playing in the middle school. And like I said, I, I knew from then that, you know, this kid could be a great player. I've seen him on the basketball court. Uh, so you, and you, you can see the athleticism will translate onto the football field and his toughness. And uh, it took him a year and we got out there. And like I said, he didn't skip a beat. Uh, I know his mother was worried about it, you know, him playing varsity as a sophomore. She's like, maybe starting off on JV. But in that, that week of practice, you know, those couple weeks of practice that he had, it was hands down, you know, the kid could play football at the varsity level. And like I said, he's been doing it for us ever since, uh, you know, be, being a three-year starter for us on defensive side of the ball. Do you, Coach, do you think – and Chris, either one of you, do you think there's other kids walking around the building that should be out playing the sport? Definitely. Yeah, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of kids that should be playing sport. Now that makes me feel good as the director of athletics. Um, <laughs> we just got to get them out now. We got the talent. We got to get them out. Um, so, you know, th this might be sharing too much, but you, you know, you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, th there's two things going on for a student athlete, right? And we, we tend to talk about the sports a lot and the, the, ac the athletic accolades, but you, you mentioned to me that you went through a process of, of growth academically. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Like, if, if you're willing to share about it, like, can you talk about like what that was like? Yeah, um, going going into high school was definitely. I didn't think it was going to be a big change, but it definitely was. But all the was getting more work, having things like you can't having can't be having things handed in late and everything. So it was like my ninth grade year. I didn't take I didn't take it as serious as I should have. I went I went into my tenth grade year still as a freshman because I failed failed Spanish. So it's like I'm missing a half credit. So I'm walking around thinking I'm a sophomore when I'm really a freshman. So like after that, I read, I knew I knew I had to wake up. My mom was getting on my case and everything. It's like I wasn't able to do certain things. She was taking sports away from me. So it's like I knew I had to wake up from that. Do you have um um any like any specific stories of, of like in the class um like you know something you when you were able to turn it around or or get back on path? English was definitely the subject. I'm not a big fan of reading. That's one of my that's one of my main one of my main struggles. It's like I can do it, but it's like I choose not to. But it's like uh Miss Bond was definitely like helped me real big. I had to stay at the school for a little with her early in, sometimes early in the mornings. So she definitely helped me. So you it almost like you were practicing for English going after school and working yeah. with, with Coach Bond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey coach, I got to I, we gotta we gotta talk about this because this is a connection that that our kids that are aspiring to play college sports need to be crystal clear on. There's no gray area on this. When when a kid is trying to go to the next level and playing college, what do they? Like, what are the first things the coaches, the college coaches, are going to ask when they come to talk to you? No matter how good of a player that he may be, and we've had tons of players with talent. As soon as they uh, they call me, text me, or come into the building. You know, first place we go to is the guidance office to print out that transcript. You know, that transcript lets them know, can I talk to this guy? Is he a person that 
can uh, and you know get accepted into our school. That's how important it is. And, and a lot of people tend to not realize ninth grade counts, uh, which is one of the biggest years. You know, to try to get out to a good start, try to get in good habits. Then, uh, then after that, if you don't get out to a good start, then you really got to climb and work your way back in. You know, to get in those grades that you definitely need. But again, you know, first thing they ask for is that transcript to see your grades, to your grade point average. You know, when you're under an 80 average, it's a lot harder to get into a lot of schools. Like as I like I always tell my players, you, you're cutting your options a little bit shorter. You know, and then like I said, when you have opportunities of schools that come in to talk to you, and some of the schools and institutions that come in, you know, they have a certain average that they have to have. And I, I tell always everybody the safe bet is that 80 average. 80 and up, you put yourself in a good situation for you know, a lot of schools and opportunities. Yeah, coach, that's well said. And um, you know, Chris, I appreciate you sharing because. It, People, you know, your your classmates and the kids that are coming after you, that's something we got to realize. And, Coach, you're right. It, it, you get behind the eight ball in ninth grade, you've made your path that much harder. So you got to hit the ground running when you get to high school because you're not, you're not getting passed along anymore. Everything is credit-based. Yep. So, gentlemen, thank you both for mentioning that. Awesome. Chris, let's move on. College, what's the plan? What are you going to be doing next year? Uh, next year I will be attending University of West Georgia and doing a walk-on. And we'll be uh, we'll be going, going to college for uh, accounting. Going to study accounting. All right. Well, best of luck in that process. We're going to move on to the 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 section of today's chat that I can't wait to 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 get to. All right, Chris, you're going to have to screen share um, your huddle account. Okay. All right, and we're going to pull up some plays. Uh, and we're going to talk about um, like kind of like a coach's circle, like what's going through the player's mind, what was the coach's play call, um, and we'll see how many plays we can get through. Okay. Because based on all those accolades, you're definitely going to have a, a, quite a highlight reel. You can see it? Yep, it's popping up right now. Okay, so don't hit play yet. Uh, who are we playing? Uh, give us set, set the scene for us here. The first game here was uh, my junior year against Byron Hills, the regular season game. Okay. Um, all right, let, let's watch this play a little bit. Let's see the results. So the arrows are pointing to you. You're on defense. Green Valley's on defense. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, play back again. Let's just keep playing it while we chat here. All right, so talk me through this, Chris. What what what's um what occurs? What are we looking at? Well, as we're looking at now, uh, the where I believe we was in man, we was in man. So I, my my guy is going in motion, and sometimes depending on what what situation we're in, we're either bump or we'll stay. So as in this play, I um bump the safety took my man. I had the I had the running back in the backfield. All right, so then the quarterback, the, the uh, so the running back is coming towards you. Quarterback is about to hand the ball to the running back. Then what happens? I actually got I actually got there just in time for to like hit the ball and end up causing a fumble before the running back even got it, and we actually got um got possession that play. <laughs> Absolutely incredible, Coach. Talk me through this one. Uh, like I said, this is uh, probably one of our our inside outside blitz that we have, and and Chris, you know, we we're in man to man. As that guy goes in motion, so now the man switches up. We rotate our safety now picks up that man that went in motion, and Chris now ends up becoming picking up the running back man. So that leaves him on a free go on a blitz, and obviously you know he lives in the backfield with a tackle for loss, tackling the, pl the player in the backfield, and now and then also you know getting a, a forced fumble with that. Yeah, that's I mean that's so incredibly rare to do. All right, Chris, let's move on to the next play. Set the scene for us. What's the next play? This next play is um, this year, my senior year against Suffern, when I had caught I had caught one of one or two of my picks, and what this one I actually brought back home to the house. Okay, so this is this is a border war. So this is this is East Ramapo versus West Ramapo, Suffern. Yeah. Okay, so this is a little bit of a rivalry game here. All right, let's is it show where you are in the field. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What we got there. We go. Chris, what's the pick six? The pick six is is a big for, <laughs> for defense to play. 
when you up down, no matter what, no matter when it happens in a game, it's going to be big. It's just another hype to the to this team. So this is, Coach. Walk us through here. What, what's uh, what are we thinking with the play call and the result? So this is uh, Chris dropping. This is what we're playing our zone coverage, and uh, like I said, Chris understands. He usually normally the flat player, but he also he, what we call we read the number two. And from Chris doing his film study, he knew that one of the plays that we reviewed last week, the week before we played him, was one of their favorite pass plays. And uh, he, the, they thought that they could get you know Chris on that play, and Chris read it, jumped the route, caught the interception from the quarterback from suffering, and then they ran it back in for a touchdown, which uh, gave us a big boost of uh, motivation and uh, kept us going as a team. Yeah, that's a big splash right there. That's an incredible play. All right, let's let's move on to the the what would be our third play here. All right, explain where we are, Chris. The third play is against Nurisho at Nurisho. This was a very a very good game in the first half, and then it's like second half we just bug it down to who was having the most mistakes. That's, sometimes that's how it works, especially in high school sports. Yeah. All right, so this is Nurisho has the ball. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the play here. Oh boy. This wasn't a blitz play. This was actually just reading reading my keys. So you sniffed this play out here. Yeah. All right, cloudy clear. You saw a window. You took a path to the ball carrier. Hey yeah, coach, before we talk about this play, can you what's it like playing a, a team the caliber of, of New Rochelle? Because I believe they went to the, the state finals this year. Yeah, they were they were state champions. Uh they were real, you know, a real disciplined team. A uh, team that makes great adjustments. Like I said, we we gave them a run for their money in the first half. I think we were the only team to score over uh, 21 points on them. You know, this is a team that doesn't give up a lot. Um, they also score a lot. Uh, but like I said, we played them real tough in the first half. Chris was playing an outstanding game. Again, you know, this is a play where he reads and reacts. And again, reads his keys without coming on the blitz. And then uh, he knows how to play downhill. And again, it's another tackle for loss in the backfield. Yeah, just the movement and the eye for the ball is really sticking out to me. All right, Chris, let's move on to the next play here. Oh, I'm going into New Rochelle is never an easy place to play. Yep. Never. It's it's part of like the like section one uh, allure. Like it's, it's a very difficult place to play. All right, so now we're moving on. Who we where are we at, Chris? Describe this to us. This next play is um is my junior versus Nyack. I'm actually I'm not in the secondary right now. This is a play of me blitzing. Um, when you see the arrow, I'm actually going to be lined up with um with our D line. Okay. That's incredible. So, the, before you talk any more about this, Chris, Coach, what, the whole this this particular type of offense is designed so that type of th thing never happens. Can you tell about this offense and how special it is what Chris just did right there? Like I said, when you, uh, you know, a team like can go from a spread going to a wing T, when you go against the wing T, you got to be able to play your rules and understand your rules and reading your keys. Chris did an outstanding job, you know, we were sending on the blitz. And we always say when that guard pulls, you stay in the hip pocket. And nine times out of 10, the guard's going to take you to the play. And he stayed in that hip pocket, read his key. And then again, another tackle for loss in the backfield. Hey, coach, real quick, how, how does this happen? Like, is this just, you know, training an athlete or is this, um, are there drills that get the kids ready for this? Like, what does this look like in the practice week? Well, you know, everybody knows uh, as soon as when you, when you play Spring Valley, we're, we're very aggressive. You know, we're coming off the bus, we're blitzing no matter what. Uh, but Chris had a knack for, for timing his blitzes. And, you know, we work on that, you know, keying the ball and, and keying the keys, trying to get any little step that we can to beat our uh, opponent off the line. It's incredible. Chris, anything you want to mention about this play? Um, no, not really. Just this this game was actually also another good game. It's like going back and forth. What is like it was it came down to the wire this game. And this is another in in county rival. Yeah. This is Nyack. Yeah. Well, listen, Chris, we'll, we'll we're gonna stop there. Um but I'm telling you, I don't know if I'm watching. You're in the backfield just as much as the other team's running backs. I don't know if I'm watching a running back footage or a linebacker footage. But um, it's the first time we've tried to do a, a coaching circle, and I, I appreciate 
you both, you know, Chris, you know, being able to, to play the film and, and coach providing some insight on, on what it's like to get your guys ready, um, you know, scouting and watching film as things you mentioned earlier, things that maybe people don't who just show up and watch um, on game day, they don't realize all the other stuff that goes into it. I, I can honestly tell you, uh, you know, because we're able to to monitor how many hours or how much time a player puts on in terms of watching film. And I can tell you this, in uh, the past three years, nobody's put in more time, you know, logging in the hours than, than Chris. Uh, it's to the point I can't get the film uploaded fast enough <laughs> without getting that text from him asking when is the film going to be up. Um, but like I said, as soon as it's up, he's up there preparing for it. And uh, like I said, he would bring it to practice and, and, and you know, we would be prepared and he would come out to the games and he would be able to make the adjustments or let me know what's going on. And which is a thing you don't get to see too, too often, you know, when you have a player that can come off and tell you what's going on, and what adjustments we can make and uh, make some checks and reads. And Chris did that for us this for the past three years. It's amazing. Hopefully it's an example for the, the kids coming up in the program, your players to follow coach. Hey, so Chris, we're going to, we're going to wrap this thing up, but I, I wanted to put you on the spot a little bit here. This has been a very strange uh, sci-fi almost end of a, end of a senior year, you know, not being able to go to school, not being able to you know be with your friends in the spring. Uh, what do you want to say to, to all your friends and all your teammates? All our friends, all the teammates, especially um, right now for the teammates, this uh, upcoming season is going to be very big. They're going to be a team to watch out for, but they're also going to be one of the smallest teams that's in that was now in A. So it's like as of what we did from from last year, from being the Final Four, now it's like it's a whole new it's a whole new um season for them. It's a whole new division. Mm -hmm. So like, I believe that we can this team this upcoming team can do something. Can make some noise. Well, I think that's that's a it's a nice challenge and and a nice standard to set for those the those guys coming up and through. I got to say this was this was a lovely chat to see some 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 game footage and to talk about what it's to be like to, to be a student athlete and uh, I appreciate both you gentlemen for jumping on today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll see you guys soon. All right. All right, then.